Hey gang, Scott here, continuing our mini series about masking in On One. This video is about color range masks. So we'll talk about what a color range mask is, the controls for it, and I'll show you some examples of how you might use them with your photos. Now, if you're still new to masking in On One or haven't seen some of the other videos in this mini series, check the show notes, uh, check my channel. I've got a playlist for them all. It'll get you up to speed because uh, you, you'll want to know a little bit about the fundamentals of masking and some of the other tools that we have. Uh, color range masks are a little more of a specialized masking tool, but they are really, really useful. So uh, let's let's get into color range masks. And I'll start with, you know, what is a color range mask? Well, it's a mask based on a color you select from your photo. It is really that simple. Uh, there are a couple of different ways to get to and interact with color range masks. So let's cover those first. We'll use this photo as our example for looking into the color range mask. Uh, we're talking about a mask, so we need something to mask, right? We need an effects filter, a local adjustment, a layer, something. I'm going to use a local adjustment for the exploration of the color range controls. The controls are quite simple. There's a couple of different places, though, that you can see a color range mask. The first is if you're working with the adjustable gradient or the masking bug. Remember the masking bug is in the mask tool group for a local, the default activated masking group is the local group. If you're still confused on the different groups of masking tools, I've got a separate video in the mini series that unpacks those and explains what's going on. But just know that an adjustable gradient, a masking bug, they work the same way. And there's a color range option here and you can adjust with the slider, the range itself. Uh, I'll turn this on for a moment, and then as we adjust things, you know, we, we kind of don't really see anything happening. You know, why? Well, I haven't put a mask down yet, right? So let me drop a mask on there, and then I'll turn that color range on and start playing with the, the mask. And we're kind of going, all right, um, something's happening. I can see things are changing. And it's, it's kind of like the, the, the gradient here, it's deciding to affect the foreground, but not the sky. It's like, it, it, it did it automatically select the color? I said, the color range mask is based on a color in your photo. We haven't chosen a color yet. And that's kind of why I, I, I gravitate away from using the color range thing in this tool. It's just, it doesn't make sense to me. So let's reset our adjustment here. Let's reset our mask. Right, let's just, just destroy that whole thing and add a brand new one. Get that exposure way down. The other place we can get the color range mask is in the masking options. So I'll click on the masking options and down here below our density and feather sliders, we have color range and we have a picker. So you can choose the color you're interested in working with. So let's do a color range. Choose, let's say I want to affect the sky and I'll just click this blue in the sky there. I'll view the mask and you know, a lot of the scene is included in the mask, right? White reveals, black conceals. I've said, give me a, a mask based on this blue color and include uh, basically the colors that match what uh, I, I've chosen. And there is a lot of blue in this scene. Let me turn that off for a second, right? There's a lot of blue all over the place. So we get this very, very bright mask. We have the range slider. We start tugging that up or down to say match more blue or match less blue. And you can see what happens there. The, the foreground, which is primarily yellow, that becomes pure black pretty quickly. And even the clouds that are up in the sky, which are, you know, kind of blue, but not fully blue, those start to take on this grayish tint and are being partially excluded in the mask. And so now when we look at this, you know, this, this god awful, very, very deep exposure change, we can see it's only affecting certain color regions courtesy of the color range. And we of course have things like feather to to smooth things out. You can see that down on the trees there as I pushed feather up, you know, it, it spread things out. I point this out because maybe a caution, if you're trying to do something very refined along an edge, 
with a color range mask and then you start playing with feather, it, it can start to do some haloing things if you're working with adjustments that amplify contrast. I'm certainly doing that with such an aggressive exposure slider. Uh, but that is the fundamentals of the color range. So let's, re, let's remove this and do this one more time. My preferred workflow. I'm working with an adjustment or an effects filter we'll do in a moment. Open up your masking area, turn on the color range, use the picker to pick something you're interested in, in my case like say blue, and then refine your color range to get your mask looking good. And, and I'll tend to toggle back and forth between looking at the overlay, I'm pressing the O key to say, all right, I'm affecting the blues in that sky, but I'm, I'm protecting some of those clouds and you know then turn it off to actually look to see how things are behaving on my photo and then of course you can refine your actual adjustment now i'm using this with a tonal adjustment you know, making things darker making things brighter that's just one thing right you can do with a color range mask the color range mask is just a mask it is nothing to do with color you know, you don't have to be doing color-based adjustments with a color range mask. So if you're if you're thinking in terms of color equals color range mask, only so far as creating the mask. So let's look at an effects example that hopefully will drive that home for you. Well, let's clear away that adjustment. Go back over to the effects panel, and for this photo, I, I want some more contrast, especially in the foreground where I've got that nice uh, golden grasses there in the blue hour. We'll add dynamic contrast. And for video purposes, let's make it surreal so we can see, wow, lots of punch right before and after, and it's affecting everything. And even that localized contrast is resulting in a lot of color contrast boost in the sky. Not what I really want. Enter the color range mask, right? We can do masking with our filters. We know this, right? We, we understand we can mask filters, layers, locals. I have a color range option and I'll choose what I want to include in this color range mask. Now, before I, before I click actually, the default color is always like this, this like salmon color. And in this case, it did a pretty good job of selecting the, the, the foreground just because the, the, the salmon color is kind of close to yellow, but I'll go ahead and click my, uh, my, my color choice on that yellow toned grass. And we can see the mask here has matched quite a bit. There's you know a big mix of cool and warm in this photo. Same idea again. We can take the, the color range down. And if I take it down very far, it's going to get very, very particular about which yellows in those grasses it's going to pick. Um, I'd probably want something in the neighborhood of like around here. And if for any reason I needed it to be like at this range, 29 or whatever that is, the, the, the number doesn't matter, the look and the, the mask and the photo does. These clouds that are left over, well, remember that we have a masking brush, we have paint out, we have our other tools, and we can just, you know, kind of clean that up and say, I really don't want that. I'm, I'm just trying to get this nice, nice look going on for my, uh, my foreground in this case. And then I still have my, my feather sliders and we can smooth stuff out here. If I turn off that view and we'll go to uh, take a look at before and after. You know, we're getting that very surreal look on just those colors. Um, not a particularly flattering look with the, the surreal, but the point being you're getting that contrast pop just on the color that you're interested in. So when you're working with a photo and you have a particular subject or element or object and it has a certain color palette, a color range mask can be a quick way to get that selected part of your mask and then use any of the tools, any effects filter, locals, to, to work on it and, uh, you know, and, and craft that, that final look. Let me show you one more possibility with the color range mask, and it's to uh, temper or, 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 or soften certain color grading options. Uh, in this photo here, I've got a very prominent red subject and a few other red accents throughout the photo, and I like those. I want those to be maintained. But I'm also interested in giving this kind of a, a look. You know, I'll use a LUT to, to do something here, and let's go into Vintage Matte. There is... 
I think it's either Resolute or is it Rome? It's Rome. It's not Rose. It's way too much for this photo. Rome. And we can see what that's doing, right? Before and after. It's kind of taking those uh, those bluish tones and, and shifting them you know, away from blue, making it more of a slate gray. But it's also you know, kind of washing out my reds in the photo, especially my telephone booth. Well, I can use the color range mask to help me out with the masking there. Color range, use my picker, and then I'll pick the, the, the shadowy part of the telephone booth. Choose view. Now, if I want to protect that telephone booth, well, then more of it should be darker, right? You know, um, I don't want this to be bright white. That means I'm applying the LUT. And already working with the range, it's pretty clear I need to invert this mask so that my telephone booth is mostly charcoal and black and the other parts of the scene are bright. And I still have my density slider, so you know we can we can temper things there. But at this point I'm feeling pretty good. I'll turn off the view and start to just look at the, the photo overall to see what's going on. And let me show you that like the before and after of of playing with that color range mask. If I reset the mask, that's before. If I undo that, that's after. And you can see the impact, right? There is just it it's it's subtle before, after, but it is helping to keep the reds of this telephone pole, a uh, pole, telephone booth, uh, more true to form. It kind of is helping to maintain that color fidelity that was there. So it's another option that you have available with the color range mask. It doesn't have to be just foregrounds and backgrounds or particular objects. Uh, it can work its way into some more creative edits when you do things like LUTs or photo filters or anything like color grading wise. Uh, anyway, I hope you found the video useful. Uh, key takeaways for the color range mask, at least for me, I'd say use the options and the controls that are in the masking options area for a given filter or a local adjustment. If you get that picker, it's right there. You'll choose the color you want to work with. And you have all your other controls there too, to view the mask, turn the mask off, uh, adjust feather and density and so forth. It's just a, a quicker experience uh, for, for me than it is to uh, use what's up in the toolbar for the, uh, the adjustable gradients. If you got any questions, drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.